let's make this mountain scene more impactful and on top let's also apply a lovely golden hour color grading and we're going to do all of that in Lightroom. So if you want to follow along feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of this video and now let's begin. So this was shot using a wide angle lens. This means things closer to the edge will get distorted and things in the center of the frame will look smaller than they truly are. In this case that's a problem because these mountains are kind of looking small and I want to change that. And we're going to change that right away. Open up the transform panel and here we can do a lot of things to make these mountains look a little bit bigger and fix that lens distortion a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use the vertical slider and slightly bring it down. Doing this you can see the foreground will kind of shrink together while the mountains in the back become bigger and bigger. So right around here looks like a good spot. I of course don't want to overdo it but you will also notice adjusting this slider we will get a gap towards the bottom of the image. You could activate a constraint crop setting which would just crop the image but that's also not what I want. Instead I'm going to fill those gaps later on in Photoshop but let's continue working on the transformation of this image. Another thing we can do is use the aspect slider. What this does is it will scale the image either vertically or horizontally depending in which direction we go. And of course we want to make the mountains bigger so I'm going to push it a little further up. Actually I want to actually I want to push it quite a bit because I think this looks just super cool this way. I think right around here looks good. And with just these two sliders we have made this whole mountain scenery look a lot more dramatic. So you can see this was our original raw file and here we have the kind of stretched mountains. Keep in mind we're just kind of compensating that wide angle distortion. So mountains on location look bigger than they are with a wide angle composition like in this case. So once we set up the transformation I can also crop the image a little bit. I think I need to rotate it slightly and I want to take away a part from the bottom and the top like this. But that's pretty much the transformed image and now we can work on the basic adjustments and the masking and so on. So next up we want to apply the golden hour color grading. For that we want to first of course set up our base adjustments. So let's go ahead open up the basic panel and change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This helps a little bit with the contrast of the image but also it makes the colors stronger which I like for a mountain landscape like this. Uh, I think at this point we could start working on that golden hour look a little bit by adjusting the white balance and a very simple change to do here is to just bring up the temperature which will introduce more golden light to this scene. So I'm going to bring it up quite a bit here. I think right around here looks great. Then I also want to change the overall exposure a bit. This means I'm going to drop the highlights which in turn gives us a little more detail in the sky and I'm also going to bring up the blacks. Looking at this program there is a little bit of an exposure. I don't think it's too bad in this scene. However bringing up the blacks will help to prevent that. So right around here is great. Then we also want to go through the presence settings real quick. Here we can make the image look sharp and clear. So let's bring up the texture for some extra sharpness. I'm also going to increase the clarity. And for this image I'm going to increase the dehaze because in the distance overlapping the mountains you can see some kind of haze blocking our view. So by increasing the dehaze we will make this image a little clearer. Just like that. And I'm also going to bring up the vibrance because as I said earlier I want this image to be colorful. Just like that. Perfect. So that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick and you can see it looks much much better already with the bigger mountains and the more intense warmer color tones. So let's continue with a little bit of masking. Let's open up the masking panel and I want to work on the sky first. For this scene I'm going to use a color range mask and click in the bright blue part on the right side. Not the dark blue on the left because 
we want to make the brighter blue tones of the sky darker, not the darker tones of the sky. So that's the reason for me to click right in here. Obviously, this will select the whole blue color palette of the sky. So I'm going to bring down the refine slider a little bit just to make sure I'm not affecting the left side too much. And I'm also going to say subtract linear gradient and I'm going to subtract like this. Okay, and with this linear gradient, I'm going to bring down the exposure. See how this nicely affects the right side without affecting the left side too much. And I'm also going to bring down the blacks, further making this part darker. And I want to bring down the saturation so those blue tones won't get too strong. I want to use another color range mask in the same area right here. Again, I want to bring down the refine slider a bit and let's subtract another linear gradient. So only the right side of the sky is affected here. Again, I'm bringing down the exposure like this. And I think I want to add one more linear gradient right on top like that. And here I'm just going to bring down the blacks. Okay, that looks great. This adds a lot of contrast with the bright clouds against the dark sky. Next up, I'm gonna use a radial gradient. Let's make it wide and thin like this. I'm going to rotate it to fit the light's direction coming in from the left side. And I'm going to place it somewhere on top of this mountain here. And I want to add some kind of light coming in from this side so I'm going to bring up the exposure very gently. I'm also going to bring up the whites and I'm going to bring up the blacks for some extra glow. Okay, that looks great. Now I think the mountains in the distance are lacking some contrast. I want to change that. So let's create a linear gradient coming down from the top like this. Of course, we don't want to change the sky, so simply hit subtract and choose select sky. This works quite nice, as you can see, and now we can start adding punch to the mountains in the back. We can do that by making the darker areas darker. So simply bring down the shadows. This is looking much better. We can also increase the clarity, which will just affect the midtones contrast. And you can see how this nicely works for this area. Uh, I don't think I want to raise the clarity that much. However, let's bring it down a notch like this. All right, perfect. Now, one more thing I want to adjust is those highlights in the landscape on the foreground. I'm going to use the color range mask one more time and let's click right in here in the sprite area. This is a pretty good selection already. I still want to subtract a linear gradient because I don't want to affect those snow covered peaks on the left. And with that selection, what I'm going to do is to make these highlights brighter by bringing up the whites. And this way we are just adding more contrast to this image. And I'm also going to increase the temperature, making these highlights a little bit warmer. You can think of it like split toning. This way we are just improving that golden light effect. And I think at this point we're done with the masking adjustments. So let's take a look at before with the raw file after some basic adjustments. And here's the image with the masking applied. As usual, masks are really transforming this image. Now we can work on the color some more. So let's head into the color mixer. And I want to start working on the hue first. I want to make those green, yellow, orange-ish color tones a little warmer. So I'm going to start this by bringing down the green hue, which will turn them more into a yellow color tone. So that's looking great. I'm also going to bring down the yellow tones a bit. All right, that should be enough. Then let's head over into, into the saturation tab, bringing up the orange saturation, the yellow saturation, and I'm going to bring down the green saturation because green is the color I like the least in this image. So I wanna reduce that a bit. Okay, we can also head into the luminance tab. Here we can bring up the yellow luminance, further making these highlights in the landscape in the foreground brighter this way because those consist mostly of yellow color tones. All right, so next up, let's do some split toning in the color grading panel. 
I want to start with the highlights first. And obviously we want to apply a golden hour like color. So let's set up the hue in this way. I'm going with somewhere around 30 points for the hue and let's bring up the saturation quite a bit so we can see the color coming in right around here. Perfect. I'm also going to adjust the midtones. Again, I'm going with a very warm hue to improve the golden hour light. And let's bring up the saturation GS a little bit. We don't want to overdo it with the midtones. So right around here, five points for saturation should be fine. And we can also head into the calibration tab. Here, I just want to push the blue primary saturation some more. And let's bring down the blue primary hue which will shift the colors of these warmer highlights a little bit more towards the orange color range. I think that looks great for this scene. All right, perfect. Now that's pretty much it for the Lightroom adjustments. All that's left to do is a little bit of sharpening in the details tab. So let's open it up and let's bring down the radius. And the radius just tells Lightroom to sharpen this much. So 0.5 pixels around an edge. So we get a very, very fine sharpening this way. And I'm going to pump up the details all the way up. This is something I always do for all my images. And of course, we don't want the sharpening to affect the image globally the same. So let's say we don't need sharpening in the blue of the sky because there is no detail. For this reason, we can make use of that masking slider. Simply hold on the Alt key and adjust it. This way we can nicely mask out the sky or that lake in the foreground like this. And all these white lines, this is where the sharpening will be applied. So once we have set up this, we can increase the amount of sharpening just like that. And we are done. Here we have the finished image after just a bunch of Lightroom adjustments. The mountains do look much bigger and more impactful. We have a very beautiful golden hour light added on, on top and now all that's left to do is we need to fill that gap in the bottom half of the image. For that I'm going to use Photoshop. So let's right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. Here all I'm doing is I'm going to grab the lasso tool by pressing L and I'm just making a rough selection around these gaps. Let's repeat this on the other side. Initially I wanted to use the generative fill tool but since Resolution wise, this is not the best option for bigger areas like this. I want to try the content aware fill, which should work decently good on an area like this. So I'm hitting Shift F5 and I want to use content aware and let's hit OK. And let's see, this works pretty good. This way we fill those gaps with higher resolution material. So it's not as obvious as with the generative fill. And that's pretty much the editing for this image. Now I do want to apply some extra special effects with a paid plugin called the Nick Collection. And obviously I also want to include this in that video here. So let's go to filter, choose Nick Collection if you have that plugin and choose Color Effects Pro 4. And what I want to do in here is let's scroll down through the filters. I want to use the polarization effect, which just makes the colors look much better. Let's pump up the strength here, making the image a little more intense. Then let's add another filter. And I want to use some extra contrast. So let's use Pro Contrast. And I'm going to bring up correct contrast as well as some dynamic contrast, just like this. Okay, and let's see, I want to add one more filter. I'm going to use, I think, Brilliance Warmth, which will add a little more warmth to the image. Let's bring up that slider here. Actually, let's not use this filter. I think I'm quite happy with just those two adjustments added on top. So let's hit OK. And here we have the finished image. So I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions or want to add anything, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.